we talk. Anyways, so one thing that we need to talk about real quick. We still got some time left in this. We got a lot of time left in this stream. I wasn't sure how long this conversation was going to go, but, you know. I wanted to talk about, so uh, a few days ago, Winter Jam was announced. Winter Jam 2023, 2022. I don't even know what they're calling it. But the new Winter Jam tour was announced and the lineup was announced. And so I wanted to give my my reaction to it and talk about Winter Jam for a while. I used to go to Winter Jam back in the day, but haven't been for a long time for very good reasons. I uh, <laughs> um, That's actually where I, I met the newsboys there at Winter Jam. And I think I mentioned that I used to be a fan of the Newsboys when Michael Tate joined. I, you know, I was a youngster, and so I just wanted I wanted it to be good, and I did like it for a while. But I was also during a time where I was a little bit more naive, and I kind of liked everything at the time. Uh, I still liked a lot of Christian music that I wouldn't say that I like today. I've changed my mind on a lot of things. So that's why I went to Winter Jam because I was I was still kind of a fan of a lot of the music. So, but I haven't been for a long time just because Winter Jam is such a it is a it is a good representation of what the Christian music scene is like just based on the people that they have on their lineups every year. So, but let's take a look at this year's lineup here. So, actually, I think I want to bring, I'm going to bring the monitor closer over here so I can see it better. So, the big, the big artist that they have announced this year is... We the Kingdom and Jeremy Camp. Uh, those are like the two big headlining ones. And Jeremy Camp is so... <laughs> and We the Kingdom. A lot of the artists that I see on this lineup are so milk toast, in my opinion. Nothing against them personally. I actually like Jeremy Camp as a person. I think he's really... I think he's really a charming guy, you know, and I think his story about his wife is very inspiring. I like he was on the Elisa Childers podcast with John Cooper, you know, and so Jeremy Camp and John Cooper are people that I don't like their music really at all, but I like what they say. <laughs> and Jeremy Camp, they, they were talking about you know talking against progressive Christianity and such, so. I like that. It's just that Jeremy Camp is so like middle ground. He's, as far as I know, he's never really made anything that special. And oh, I, I'm I'm covering the the chat right there. Yeah, I'll make this I'll make this smaller so I'm not covering the chat. Um, uh, Agent Serenity in the chat says I miss the old rock music Jeremy Camp from back in the day. I I, I kind of agree with you. I mean, at least he was doing something edgy back then. But even then, I wasn't even back then. I wasn't too hot on Jeremy Camp because I, I didn't really feel like that he was doing bringing anything new to the table. He was just kind of he kind of sounded like Cutlass, you know. And so I, I never really got into Jeremy Camp. But yes, I I do prefer that Jeremy Camp over current Jeremy Camp. Because you listen to current Jeremy Camp and it's like, <coughs> a while ago I did a review on one of his latest albums. I don't even know if it's his newest anymore. But is the most unoriginal pop music, in like even like Imagine Dragons inspired stuff. And it's just so middle ground. 
And so I, I just don't really find anything interesting about the music that Jeremy Camp makes. And it's fine if you if if anyone likes him, but just like I, I never really found him that special. We the Kingdom, you know, they're a much newer band, of course. I kind of feel the same about We the Kingdom. They in fact, I feel the same way about We the Kingdom that I have about uh, uh, Ren Collective. They're both... See, I-, I love folk music. I had a big folk music phase back in the day when I when I discovered Mumford & Sons. But I still listen to folk music. I love folk music. But We the Kingdom and Ren Collective are, are bands that I felt like were... It was just the most basic folk music that wasn't really anything special. Now, while I love folk music, most of the artists that I like at least are, are unique enough to have their own voice. And I never felt that way about Ren Collective, and I never felt that way about We the Kingdom. They're just, you know, run-of-the-mill Christian folk music. And that's kind of what... I mean, a lot of, a lot of Christian artists have kind of gone in that direction over the past few years of kind of just... They rode the wave of that folk sound, and it just sounds like the most generic folk music ever. And a lot of it just sounds like music that you'd hear in a car commercial. So, so yeah, nothing really that special about We the Kingdom, in my opinion. I'm very surprised that they got Andy Minio on this tour. Agent Serenity says, preach, sir. Thank you. <laughs> I'm glad I, I'm glad I got some affirmation here. But Andy Minio kind of surprises me a little bit with this lineup because I always Okay. I'll be honest, I'm not too familiar with all of Andy Minio's stuff. But I what I have heard is quite, you know, artistically pretty interesting. And so I never really felt that Andy Minio was like quite in the mainstream like uh Lecrae or Trip Lee, someone like that. So it is surprising, but I guess maybe Lecrae or Trip Lee just, you know, couldn't make the tour. So they got who <laughs> the next more popular one. I guess he was really popular for uh, You Can't Stop Me or how, you know, You Can't Stop Me. Um, He had a really good song that I actually really liked called Heartbeat. <laughs> so. I don't know. I, I'll say I, I'm not as familiar with Andy Minio's music, so we'll see. Ann Wilson, I can't even, I don't even, I'm not really that familiar with her music. I, I can't really name a song by her. So not really any, not really any opinion there about Ann Wilson, but my expectations are her is she's just kind of, you know, your everyday female Christian artist, you know, hardly any of them really stand out to me except for Lauren Daigle, which I don't really even like Lauren Daigle that much, but at least Lauren Daigle has been, she's, she's been very influential. And ever since Lauren Daigle came out, um, or, uh, got big, all I've been really hearing is like Lauren Daigle wannabes. So anyways, just a little hot take on Lauren Daigle. Right there. Uh, We also got Disciple, which is an interesting one. They usually with every Winter Jam tour, they always have their their hard rock bands. Like, you know, they usually have Skillet or Red, and it's usually one of the two every year. So. I guess neither Skillet or Red could really make this tour, so they got uh, you know they got wh- whoever else. I used to be a, a big fan of Disciple when I listened to this kind of you know I was just getting into metal, and so there was a lot more like straightforward, heavy rock music that I listened to. I don't really listen to them that much anymore; they're not really my thing. But I at least have some respect for them for what they do. And I appreciate the fact that their lyrics are very, you know, very biblically based for the most part. I remember when I used to listen to their albums, I, you would look in their in their the pamphlet that came you know, or the booklet 
And you look in their lyrics for the songs and they always had like a scripture reference for, for all their lyrics. And I appreciate that. And so I appreciate Disciple for who they are. I may not really like their music that much anymore, but I, uh, th- it's a choice that intrigues me, especially since I'm pretty sure I haven't listened to their music in a long time, but at least they're the music that I did listen to. I'd say they're probably heavier than Skillet or even Red because they, uh, they get, you know, they get pretty screamy. I mean, Red gets screamy, but Disciple has like heavy breakdowns in a lot of their songs. In fact, I remember one of my old bands, we did a cover of one of their songs, uh, The Battle of St. Augustine. Uh, it's pretty, pretty intricate metal breakdowns in that stuff. And, uh, you know, it's fun. So we'll see. Austin French. I have no idea who that is. <laughs> uh, just, which is probably why he's not like one of the bigger, you know, top biller ones. So probably just another carbon copy of like, you know, a Jeremy Camp type person. Excuse me. I don't know if any of you could hear that, but I'm really hungry right now. <laughs> Agent Serenity says the poster is kind of funny because you have hardcore disciples picture then next to an Austin French in a kind of awkward pose. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> he's just like, "Hello, hi guys." <laughs> I'm I'm cool too. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, disciple does kind of stand out, you know, with their long hair and their cool looks and then you uh you know of course you got new song new song are they're the they're the ones that host winter jam every year and i think winter jam is the only reason why they've stayed relevant i'm sorry uh new song to me is kind of like they're like diet mercy me and some of you guys may know I'm not a huge fan of Mercy Me. So, yeah, new, new song. Yeah. They always got to play their song that's like, it sounds like 20 years old. Arise, my love. It sounds like it's from the 80s. Like a bad 80s Christian song. Sorry. Uh, and then we got some pre-jam stuff, which they usually always put like the smaller, smaller artists. And, you know, I, I know I'm covering my face right now. I just want you guys to see because they're so small. We got Thrive Worship. No idea who they are. I imagine they're not going to cover Thrive by Newsboys. We lift me up with tender care. Anyways, probably just a run-of-the-mill, nothing special worship band. Sean B. Interesting name. Because it's not just, it's not the it's not the letter B. It's the word B. It's like Sean B. B. It's like a bad uh, commercial Logan for like some sort of lotion. B. Agent Serenity says, you, I've heard Thrive. You aren't missing any, anything. Yeah. I mean, they're just on the pre-jam section. <laughs> yeah, I, I figured you meant the band, not the album by the Newsboys. <laughs> um, if they're just in the pre-jam, they're probably nothing that special. And so we got Sean B. and Renee. I don't know any of them. Renee looks like a uh, oh man what was that one si- that one girl duo that was kind of popular uh T- a Tegan and so I don't know who I'm thinking about but and then oh also we got a uh, special guest pe- speaker Zane Black don't know who he is so basically, the only people that I'm very familiar with, I'm fairly familiar with, is Jeremy Camp, We the Kingdom, Annie Minio, and Disciple, and I guess New Song. So, 
All this to say, and I guess, I don't know if this is a big announcement. I have always wanted to go to Winter Jam and make a video about it. And and so their Winter Jam is coming to Peoria in January. And I'm planning on going. I'm going to make a video about Winter Jam. And, you know, just document my experience there. I think I wanted to do that last year. I just didn't get the chance. And so I'm going to do that this year. I'm saying it. I'm announcing it to everyone right now. Come January, I'm going to film it. I'm going to film my experience. <clears throat> and it's going to be a fun time. And I, yeah, I've always wanted to do a Winter Jam video and call it, I went to Winter Jam so you don't have to. <laughs> it's going to be so harsh. I plan on, if I can't get someone to come with me to film me, I'm just going to find some section like off in the balcony where I can comfortably like set up a camera and such. And uh, I want to film my reactions and all the interesting stuff. Hopefully it'll be an interesting enough thing to film. But yeah, I want to I want to make a review about Winter Jam that's going to make a lot of people upset. So I'm excited. I'm excited about it. Uh, I mean, I don't know. Maybe I'll be pleasantly surprised and I'll just change the video to I went to Winter Jam, so you should too. But I doubt it. But yeah, hope that sounds like I hope that sounds like a good idea. I just uh, I want to experience it and. Uh, make an interesting video on it because I've, yeah, I don't think that anyone's ever done that before. So, sorry, yawning. Um, also wanted to talk about the fact that it is $15 at the door. What the heck, Winter Jam? For as long as I can remember, it has been 15, it has been $10 at the door so what the heck man i know there's inflation and everything but you should it's you should have the choice i'm just kidding i really don't care agent serenity says then hidden from the crowd clifford begins to sing old school newsboys to remind the crowd what real christian music sounds like <laughs> right i'll just start singing breakfast like, when there's no music playing, I'll just be, When the toast is burning, all the milk. <laughs> and then uh, Jeremy Camp will probably sing along, actually. <laughs> yeah, I think, uh, didn't the Newsboys United tour? I think they did Winter Jam. I actually caught the United tour, and that was pretty fun. But, uh, yeah, too bad. I, I, I missed what was probably the best Winter Jam tour in a while. But, yeah, it should be interesting, and I'm excited. I'm excited to make a fun little video poking fun at Winter Jam. Sorry, my nose. My, I'm so, I feel so congested right now. Okay, so that's my reaction to Winter Jam the lineup and everything so stay tuned come january when i go see it hey so i don't know if you guys know this but what you just watched was basically just a clip of a full podcast episode of my podcast the i'm clifford today show so you should just go check out that whole episode also while you're at it you might as well like the video and subscribe to my channel you know, that'd be really nice. I mean, you're nice people, right? Okay.